Hi, I'm Scott. Today I'm going to show you how to transfer this living room space on Dad It Yourself. Okay, so these two piers we've had for about 12 years and they have seen their day and we need some more storage other than those little teeny cabinets down there and there. So what I'm going to do is do two built-ins uh, right across here about 21 inches deep and then countertops and then floating shelves all the way up to bracket the TV and then the new fish tank will actually go on this side and then this whole area will get cleaned out and that will get retired. I built that probably six years ago, eight years ago. So what's going to happen? Got to take out all the stuff out of these things. Got to cut back the baseboard. I'm leaving the carpet in because the next guy may want carpet there and may not want my built-ins. So I'll build on top of the carpet here. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to start the installation process by removing the baseboards. What that means is this piece next to the fireplace, the back wall piece, and 17 inches, uh, 17 and a half inches of the piece along the side wall, and that'll make enough room for the base to slide right into this corner. I got to do that here and then on the other side of the fireplace. All right, so it's the next day. Today's goal is to batch out some parts and pieces to put these cabinets together. But what I'm gonna start with is the base. I got the two by fours right here. I'm gonna cut those out, put those together and install those in the living room and then start working on breaking down the plywood for the cabinet boxes. Okay, next step, I'm build these pedestals, got all my pieces cut uh, using Number nine, T25 Torx head, three inches. That should hold it together. Uh, not really structural, but uh, you know, a little extra strength can't hurt. I got both of these in. This one was a little bit extra challenging because God forbid I disconnect the internet in my house. You can't do this. You can't take away the Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. <laughs> so I have this four by eight sheet of uh, pine plywood from the big box store. Most people would have used Baltic birch, but this is gonna be painted so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna be cutting it into 21 inch lengths and then cross cutting those to 26 and a quarter. Uh, using my Craig Rip Guide on this Ryobi cordless saw. So this second sheet of plywood, I ripped one 21 inch section out of it that'll be the base of the cabinets and two six inch strips that'll be used as the support stringers on the top and on the back. So the next step is gonna be cutting all these support stringers on the miter saw to their final length. So these are the center panels, and because the support spanners dissect them, I have to make some little cutouts in the back and in the front top so that those spanners can seat on those, and then I'll have a, a screw point for them as well. So I have this cutoff from the spanner, and I'll just use that as my marker there. I'm gonna cut those out with the jigsaw. So I'm going to use pocket holes to put these together. This is the Craig R3 jig and 
A lot of people say things about pocket holes, but pocket holes are perfect for what I'm doing here. This ain't fine furniture. So pocket holes, two in the ends of each of these stringers, and then some in the side panels, or excuse me, in the bottom panel to hold to the side panels. So pocket hole montage coming up. Oh, thank God I'm done with that. All right, all the pieces and parts are here. Everything's labeled, ready to go. Let's build some cabinets. Okay, got my bottom all set up. This is the right side out. This is the bottom. This is actually the back of the cabinet. Got it lined up, temporary clamp right here. I'm gonna put some Type on 3 down this seam and drive those screws in. Okay, first cabinet's done. Got the stretchers up top. And pretty much those are the nailing flanges back there. They're gonna anchor it to the wall. Looks good, actually. Let's go put this thing in. Okay, fit in really well. Uh, I got my studs marked out on the back and we're gonna go ahead and countersink some holes and screw this thing into the studs and down into the pedestal with my three inch E25 Torx heads. Alright, second cabinet's in. Internet got disconnected. What? And look at that. Mom at yourself already decided she wanted to paint it. Couldn't even wait till tomorrow. So what I need to do, I need to fix that floorboard right there. And then I'm going to put some Alex Fast Dry paint caulk right there and right along that edge there. So she can keep painting away to her heart's content. Face frames tomorrow. Hey, good morning everybody. So day three of the cabinet build. Mom at yourself actually got some paint put in that one. And then we got the other one over here. So today is, uh, we're gonna finish the toe kick, put some face frames on these and a second coat of paint, and then hopefully work on the tops. So you saw me put glue on here. This is an inch and a half with a quarter inch reveal on the back side. I used a piece of quarter inch hardboard I had as my sticker. And that actually also leaves me a half inch back here, which is perfect for my door slides. So on the center divider, it's all about centering the style. And then on this outboard side against the wall, I'm going to check the distance, but I'm probably going to end up scribing it to the wall. So for the drawer rail, I have these four and a half inch blocks here. So I get my spacing nice and square. And then on the back, I have pocket holes right here. So the key here on this one is in the center, you want to offset your pocket hole so you're not driving two screws into the end of each other. So I have this OSB left over from when I tore my shop apart. It's half inch and I'm going to use this as the sub base for the countertops instead of ripping up a $40 piece of three quarter plywood. So I just need to cut this into roughly 21 and three quarter inch lengths and then lay it on the top as the sub base. And then I have a really nice piece of plywood that I'll be using as the top. Well, here we are at the end of day two. That cabinet is complete, painted, face frame, and the first sub top is on. And same with the second one. Mom at Yourself did a really good job of painting those today. Two coats, bare, ultra, premium, plus, super duper, whatever. Got all the baseboards in with the toe kick. Looks really good, came out nice. 
And then, so we're gonna paint this eggshell white. This is gloss, this is gonna be eggshell. And then we're gonna put a mantle on here. We're still arguing about the size of that mantle, but you'll see that probably in the next day or so. Hey, good morning, next day here. Got the plywood in the shop because it is raining. Big surprise, Puget Sound, rain, what? I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down to rough size for the countertops. And then I'll go ahead and bring it inside and start scribing it so it fits against the walls. I got some really neat bows in the walls and not so, so straight edges. Uh, so I wanna fit that as best I can. So scribing is just a matter of putting the piece in place, taking a compass, cutting it along the wall. And in this case, this one has a nice little bow right here in the middle. And then once I have a line, I just take my belt sander and slowly sand up to that line. And we'll just keep tuning it in and work our way around to all three sides. Okay, here's a little detail I want to show you. If you'll notice right here, I kind of back cut this. When I'm using the jigsaw to come down here, I put a little tilt on it to back cut it. Because you just want this leading edge up here to touch the wall and you don't want this to interfere. And then I just follow that with the belt sander. And the blue tape here is just to help with chip out and a nice clean line that I can see. So I got these all scribed in. Not perfect, but as long as they're within an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth, then I can cover that with caulk. And then over to this one. Got that one all scribed in along the back wall. Push that in a little. Okay. All right. So we got to put some glue on these, uh, put them down with 23 gauge pin nails, and then a face frame on the countertop, and then let mom it yourself take care of it with the paintbrush. morning everything today is all about drawers and doors I've got these one by four common boards and I'm going to build my drawer boxes today uh, mimicking what I already have in my kitchen nothing special just four sides and a face frame uh, the difference between these and what I have in my kitchen is my kitchens are made out of MDF and flame spray with pretty much stickers on them these are all going to be hardwood drawers with pine boxes and poplar fronts all right, so I have this four by eight sheet of quarter inch plywood here, and this was only 23 bucks. Had I bought two by two panels for all the drawer bottoms and door faces, I would have paid $54. So this is definitely the way to go if you need a bulk and you have the ability to cut it yourself. And I have the ability to cut it myself. So let me go ahead and cut out all the drawer bottoms first. And then once I get to door building, I'll cut the door faces out of whatever's left of this. So all my pieces have been cut and I sanded everything to 150 grit on the inside. It'll be a lot easier to sand it before I put them together. Got my bottom panels, all my sides, fronts and backs. Let's go ahead and assemble some drawers. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the drawers to dry out in the garage, I'm uh, going to install the hardware. I got these 20 inch Everbuilts from Home Depot. I could have gone with metal slides, but I decided to go with these because literally this is what I have in my whole house. My bathrooms, my kitchen, they all have these drawer slides. Uh, really simple. They come in even numbers. Uh, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, 22. Um, my cabinet's actually 21 inches deep. You say to yourself, well, how's that going to work? Well, the cool part is, is they have these neat little back brackets that snap on there and you have about an inch and a half of play from the end of the bracket to the back wall where you can adjust that for the support in the back. So I have this piece of uh, one by six, which is actually only five and a half inches wide. 
of poplar that I'm going to use for the drawer faces. This is going to get painted. Uh, I'm going to cut it to rough lengths and then I'm going to rip those to the final width which is about five and an eighth. This has a slight bevel on the top and the bottom and it's square on the ends and then it has a round over on the face as the detail. All right, so I have the table saw set up to 15 degrees to cut that top and lower bevel on the drawer faces. Let's go ahead and get that done. I've gone ahead and reset the fence to my final width of five and an eighth inches. We'll run those boards through again and get the uh, top sides cut. So I have a three eighths round over in here and I've got the, my fence set up to give me my distance and that will give me this round over detail right here with this little shoulder. So let's run those. Remember, always run the end grain first and then the side grain second. So if there's any blowout, the router will take care of that. All right, so I sanded these all down to 120 with the orbital and then knocked down all the edges with this sanding sponge and these are ready for paint. I have some one by three poplar here, which is actually one by two and a half. This is gonna be the rails and the styles of the doors. I'm gonna start by batching out all the styles and rails to rough lengths, and then I'll rip that to width, and then we'll start milling all the details, like the bevels and the roundovers and the rabbits for the door panel. All right, so all my milling's done. I got my uh, strap clamp set up here. I'm gonna use Type On Thick and Quick because I only have two strap clamps and I wanna get these under glue and start working on the panels today. This glue's clear and in 15 minutes, so we're gonna use this. Hey, Mama yourself did a really good job painting these drawer faces. But next step, there's my door frames. Gotta build some panels and I do it using that. and we'll let these dry overnight and Mama Yourself will do her magic with them. So Mama Yourself did a really great job painting these doors front and back. Now it's time to put in the European style hinges. I got these hinges right here from Amazon. I'll put a link to them in the description and I'm using this Craig jig with the 35 millimeter hole bit and the adapter so you don't go too deep and really these doors are all symmetrical, so as long as I get them on the same side, all the doors will fit no matter where I put them in. Pretty much what I do here is we line them up on this edge and then I'll line it up on this edge. And we drill the hole down right in there and clamp it on and everything will be good. Let's put those together. Okay, time to install the doors. Pretty simple here. This is a half inch overlay door. It is three and a half inches from the top of this buckle to the top of the door. So subtract a half an inch so I have my overlay. I put a mark right there. I'll line up the top of the buckle right there and then drive a screw in. Repeat that eight more times or seven more times and these doors will be hung. These have adjustments in and out and up and down as well so I can get the final door aligned. Let's do that now. Perfect, no adjustment needed. Okay, now that I have the doors on, I can put the drawer faces on. And this is a case of what looks right as opposed to what is right, because I wanna make sure all my lines are square and level and everything shows. So like, as you can see right here, this is where the drawer face goes, but it may not be centered on the drawer body behind. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some two-sided tape on the back of this, stick it to the drawer box, clamp it, countersink, and put the drawer in. Okay, not gonna bore you with the details here, but literally I'm gonna take this scrap of plywood 
and I'm going to make a box that's 72 and 3 quarters of an inch long, 8 inches deep, and 2 inches tall. And that's going to become the mantle. Okay, last step of the project. Got to put the floating shelves up. So those signify where the studs are over there as well. And then that one and that one are 16 inches, 16 inches, and then another 16 inches from the ceiling. And that's where the shelves are going to go left or right. They're four feet wide. And that will give me enough room if I have to pull this pump out or if I have to do some work on this fish tank. See the fishies? There's fishies right all right so here's the shelves i'm going to open them up in a second and i will have a link to amazon down below in the comments if you're interested in getting some of these for yourself they're white they're two inches by four feet and they pretty much look like the profile of that mantle cap which is now painted came out really nice all right let's open these boxes and get these installed So this was a super fun project for me. I got a chance to learn some new skills and try out some new techniques. I'd never built cabinets before, so this was quite the challenge for me. It was a lot of little projects spread over a long period of time. Unfortunately, my wife wasn't really happy that it took me two and a half months to complete this project. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for notification. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Daddy yourself.